In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calculate the cycle time, minimum number of workstations, and to balance an assembly line with nine tasks, and then calculate the theoretical and actual efficiency of the balanced line. This question corresponds to problem 9.17 in your text. The Mach 10 is a one-person sailboat manufactured by Creative Leisure. The final assembly plant is in Victoria, and the assembly area is available for production for 200 minutes per day. The rest of the time it's busy making other products. The daily demand is 60 boats. The tasks, uh, performance time, and precedence relationships are in the table below. We have four objectives for this problem. The first is to draw a precedence diagram and assign the tasks using five workstations. Then we'll determine the efficiency of the assembly line. We'll also calculate the theoretical number of workstations, which I'll actually do before balancing the line. And then we'll determine the idle time per boat. And as part of that, we'll calculate the theoretical and actual efficiency. So let's start by calculating the cycle time. Remember the cycle time is the production time available divided by the units required. We have 200 minutes per day available divided by 60 boats per day. So that's 3.33 minutes per boat cycle time. Then we can calculate the minimum number of workstations by taking the sum of the task times, which is 13 minutes by adding up all of the performance times in the table. And we divide that by the 3.33 minute per unit cycle time. That gives us 3.9 or four workstations. Now we'll go ahead and balance the line. Before balancing the line, of course, we have to draw it. And so your completed precedence diagram should look something like this. You can stop the video and trace the precedence relationships through the precedence map to make sure you understand how it's all working. To start to balance the line, we'll start with activity A and any activities in close proximity. Since our cycle time is 3.3 minutes, what we want to do is combine tasks to end up with a workstation time that is equal to or as close as possible to the cycle time. Now the cycle time is 3.3 minutes, but we have even numbers, so we're not going to be able to come up with workstations that are at 3.3 minutes. The closest is probably going to be around 3 minutes. So if we look at the first number of tasks, A, B, C, D, we can see that task A with a one minute task time and task C with a two minute task time can be combined into a workstation because they're in close proximity and A precedes C. So that'll be a workstation with a three minute cycle time, workstation number one. Next, we see that activities or tasks B and D, each with a task time of one minute, can be combined into a workstation with a two minute cycle time. So we'll call that workstation number two. Task E is three minutes and is as close to the cycle time as we can get without going over. And that'll have to be a workstation on its own. So that'll be workstation three with a workstation time of three minutes. If we look at the four remaining tasks, F, G, H, and I, we see that H and I are also in close proximity, H precedes I, and the sum of the two together will come up with a three minute workstation time. So let's combine H and I into a workstation. And that leaves F and G each with a task time of one minute, which must be combined into a last workstation with a two minute workstation time. So we can call that workstation four and the workstation with tasks H and I will be workstation five. As you can see, with five workstations, we have been unable to achieve the theoretical minimum of four workstations. Now on to calculating the theoretical efficiency and the idle time. The formula for theoretical efficiency is the sum of the task times divided by the number of actual workstations times the cycle time. We have 13 minutes sum of task times, and we divide that by five workstations times 3.3 minutes. That gives us 78% theoretical efficiency. Now actual efficiency is a variation of that, the formula for which is the sum of the task times divided by the number of actual workstations, but instead of multiplying by the cycle time, we multiply by the maximum station time. The maximum station time is simply the highest workstation time in our balanced assembly line. So the sum of the tasks is still 13 minutes and we have five workstations, but the longest workstation time is three minutes. So we'll take 13 divided by five times three, that's 86.7% efficiency. In order to determine the balance delay or idle time as a percentage, what we want to do is compare each actual station time to the original calculated cycle time of 3.3 minutes. So station one has a station time of three minutes, which means 0.33 minutes are idle. Station two has a time of two minutes with 1.33 minutes idle. Station three, same as station one, 0.33 minutes idle. Station four, 1.33, and station five, also 0.33 minutes. 
those add up to a total of 3.65 minutes. In order to calculate the balance delay, we would take the 3.65 minute total idle time and divide by five workstations times the 3.33 minute cycle time, and that will end up at about 0.22 or 22%. Well, when you add 22% to the 78% theoretical efficiency, you get 100%. So that means that the 22% is the theoretical balance delay. If we want to calculate the actual idle time and the actual balance delay, we can adapt what we just did for the theoretical idle time and theoretical balance delay by determining the idle time in relation to the maximum station time. So in the modified table in orange, you can see that stations 1, 3, and 5 have zero idle time, and stations 2 and 4 have one minute each of idle time, so that's a total of two minutes. And to calculate the actual balance delay then, we would take the sum of the idle times and divide that by the actual number of workstations times the maximum station time, instead of the cycle time that's used for theoretical balance delay. That gives us two divided by five workstations times three, or two over 15, is 13.33%. Of course, when we add that to the actual efficiency of 86.7%, that works out to 100%. And that's how you calculate cycle time, minimum number of workstations, balance align, and calculate both theoretical and actual idle time and balance delay.